Hello and welcome into the Rink Live podcast. I'm Sydney Wolf, and today I'm joined by Calvin Simon, who's the head hockey uh, boys coach at Shakopee. And uh, thanks for joining us on the show today, coach. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me, Sydney. I'm excited to be here. So as always, we just like to, you know, give a quick, quick recap of the past season of the past year. So everybody's fresh in their minds what happened. But this past season, Shakopee 12 13 won it overall, eventually falling to Minnetonka in that Section 2 AA quarterfinal. But overall, it seems like the team had some nice wins this past year, made some nice progress towards the end of the season. So kind of just in your eyes, uh, what did you think of this past year? Yeah, last year um, is, is marked as a level of success for us. You know, we're... You know, building a program and things are trending in the right direction. And last year we took a big step in that and we did it with um, a mixture of, of seniors and guys in their fourth year and, you know, freshmen and even uh, two eighth graders in their first year of hockey. And um, what was really fun and special as a coach was to see all the kids come together, um, see the upperclassmen really take into their leadership and, and support the younger guys and the younger guys were sponges and, and coachable and, and wanted to get better. And, um, you know, we had birth years as young as, uh, guys that are, that are oh eights and then all the way up to all threes. So it was, it was a wide variety of, of players. Um, uh, but you know, we had a good coaching staff and, and worked really hard to, um, you know, make it a fun year for everyone. And then you know, we won some games. So that was great. We obviously lost some games too. Um, the, the Minnetonka game was, uh, a really fun and special event. We didn't get to play in the playoffs the year before due to COVID. So uh, it was just, it was fun to be back in a playoff atmosphere. And I was proud of the guys, proud of the way our guys you know, battled and, and played through that game. And to be honest, I've heard from quite a few coaches, either people we've talked to on the show or just talking to people out at games, but I've heard a lot of people that are excited kind of to watch Shakopee for this next year because they think even this last year, you know, there's some, some good stuff uh, cooking up in Shakopee, some really good upcoming players. So it seems like there's a lot of excitement, you know, around the program and heading into this next year. I mean, are, are you guys just as excited? It's, it seems like as some of these other, you know, people I'm talking to. Yeah, of course. I mean, we're excited every year and, you know, this year will be maybe a touch more exciting because uh, for the first time in a long time, it, it feels like we're going to be playing with expectation uh, that we're expected to be good. We're expected to win some games. You know, we're expected to be competitive in the playoffs. Um, in the past, it was more of, you know, uh, trying to be the, the underdog and trying to steal games and trying to sneak up on an opponent um, that maybe wasn't giving us the respect. We, we know we're going to get everybody's best. We know it's not going to be easy game in and game out, which should, you know, bode well for us in terms of preparing to be, you know, a playoff team that, that wins some hockey games. But of course, we're, we're really excited. Um, you know, it's, it's August now, late August, as we're doing this interview. And um, it's just, I, I know it'll go fast and we'll be in the season before you know it, but I, I can't wait. And so obviously like every other team, you know, some seniors, you always lose some at the, at the end of the season that have now graduated, but it doesn't seem like you're losing, you know, a crazy amount of like, you know, over half the team or anything like that. I know some, some teams, you know, have really big amounts of turnover, but it seems like even some of the seniors you are losing, I'm sure it's some leadership and some experience, but you're not losing, you know, all of your top five players or anything like that. But just for the seniors that did graduate, you know, can you speak on any of those guys and what they kind of brought to the team this past year? Yeah, of course. Well, anytime you graduate guys, you know, the dynamics of a team changes, um, you know, we, we graduate a lot of leadership. Uh, so we'll be looking to other guys to step in, which they've already done a really good job this off season in our summer training um, to, to step into those leadership roles. But, you know, guys like Joe Roeder, who was a four-year player, a two-year captain, uh, first line center, um, you know, that's going to be a big hole we're looking to fill. And we're excited about the prospects of, of the guys that were training with us in camp. And um, you've got a couple other guys, you know, Yede Houston, whose younger brother will be a, a, a junior and, and the incumbent starter for, for our goaltending. But yeah, another guy who scored a bunch of goals for us over his career. Um, but again, both those guys, great leaders. Um, and all the guys were graduating. You know, there's an Evan Hansen who was, was riddled with injuries, um, but a leader. You know, one of the guys giving rides to everybody and, and one of those glue guys, you know, a George Stamos who didn't play a ton of minutes, um, but was absolutely adored in the locker room. You just, we're we're going to miss all those guys. Um, and each year, like I said, when you graduate, you know, it changes the dynamics. Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing the leadership out of, of the new senior class and all the returning guys. And so kind of just to talk a little bit about, you know, yourself and your own coaching story. I know you've been with Shakopee for what is it, four, four seasons now going on five, something like that. Correct. Yeah, this will be this will be your number five. 
So I know too, just sort of reading up on you a little bit, it sounds like you actually were, were kind of a football guy for a while there. So what kind of made you, I know you're from Shakopee, but what made you want to, you know, go from that and then come back into hockey and uh, yeah. at, the, at the high school level, what's kind of your story getting into all that? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's kind of two avenues that, that led me to football and then also led me back to hockey. So I, I, I love both sports growing up. Um, you know, absolutely loved hockey. Uh, we played, you know, in town here in Shakopee and uh, was on the team my junior year when we went to state. And, you know, I have a lot of fond memories of my hockey experience. I played more hockey than I did any other sport growing up. I was playing in the spring. I was playing in the fall. I was playing any chance I could. Um, and except for on game days for football, of course. Uh, but I just I, I, I knew and could s clearly see the path for football. Um, I wanted to get to school. The junior route didn't excite me. I didn't understand it like I do now. I knew I had to live you know, in a billet family and I um, you know, was going to have to you know, go and play somewhere, um, probably in a, you know, a community that's desolate. And I wanted a big city and I wanted you know, some of those things. And so I had that opportunity with with football at Concordia and St. Paul and um, you know, I also, when I went on my tour uh, for football, the, the, the dynamics of the locker room, you had every, which, I mean, you had people with money, people without money, people that can run fast, people that are slow, people that are smart, maybe not so smart, big, small, um, you know, from the East coast, from the West coast, from down South, from the Midwest, all of that really excited me. I feel like I could learn a lot. Um, and, and I had a scholarship opportunity. Um, and then it was just, you know, when I played hockey, it was, it was different. The game is really evolving and, and being more, um, you know, I guess inclusive. Um, but it was, it was odd walking in the locker rooms or walking to the rinks. And, you know, as I became more self-aware, not seeing anyone that looked like me, it kind of deterred me a little bit. Um, in hindsight, I, I wish I would have had the perspective I do now and, and just kind of you know, battled through that and been more of an ambassador for the sport in general, um, which is kind of what drew me back to it. It was uh, twofold. It was, I, I saw an opportunity to make an impact on a big scale with, with young boys and young girls developing into young men and young women. Um, and then I had a mentor I'm a couple of them, but mostly it was it was Zach Sikich and, and AJ Bukino, uh, two guys in the hockey world that are well respected and have been pouring you know, a time, ton of time and energy and, and, and earning their dues. And they took me under their wing and and taught me a lot about the game and, and had those opportunities. So I walked away from a real estate deal to do some some hockey and, and coaching and training. And it just uh, I, I'm extremely grateful for the, the opportunity to be back in uh, one thing I know too, talking about some of the players that, uh, you know, people are excited about or the team's excited about coming back for next year. Uh, some of the younger players, we'll get to them in a second here, but, uh, you know, leading scorer will be returning to uh, Jackson Vogel, or if I say anyone's name wrong, feel free to correct me, but he'll be yeah. returning this year, uh, junior turning into a senior for this upcoming season. But, you know, for him, kind of what did he bring to the team uh, besides just, you know, the the points on the score sheet? Jackson is uh, full of passion. Uh, he wears his heart on his sleeve, um, you know, which can be a gift and a curse. And we've been working with him on that. And, you know, when he uses it, um, you know, for positivity and for inspiration, it's, it's infectious. Um, he's a great skater. Um, he's got incredible vision. He can move the puck. He's led our team in points and assists, you know, the last two seasons um, and, and knows how to score as well. Um, and, and he's, he's, he's just a, a player you want on your team. He's a dynamic game changer. Um, and if you can put him with with another goal scorer, another playmaker, typically the pucks in the offensive zone and, and typically we're, we're scoring goals. So uh, grateful to have a guy like that on our team. Grateful. I mean, this is a guy that played as a freshman, too. So he's in his fourth year. So, you know, we're expecting the game to slow down for him, his leadership to really shine through um, and for it to be kind of his time to take lead of the team. And then some of those younger players, you know, that people are super excited about, but right behind him in points this year was Cooper Simpson, another young player. looks like he'll just be a sophomore. And then Carson Steinhoff, I know, heard a lot about him over this off season too, this summer. Uh, and he was only, it looks like an eighth grader. So some really, really young players that are going to have a ton of experience by the time they're done uh, in high school and all that good stuff. So for both of those guys, you know, do they just have a super high ceiling? Are they just going to like keep growing every year? Because it seems like they already had uh, pretty good years this past year. Yeah, the, the sky's the limit for those guys. You know, uh, Cooper is a pure goal scorer. Um, he's got an electric shot. Um, he sees the game from a unique lens. Um, there's many times where he's doing things where I'm like, nope, nope, 
okay, nice play. Yep, that works. Or he'll score a goal or he'll do some, you know, unique things in that way. Um, but he's, like I said, he's just a, a great player, um, sees the game really well. Um, Carson is, is similar in that, but he's on the defensive side. Um, for an eighth grader, he led our team in minutes, which is, um, I, we didn't see that coming in the summer leading into the season. I, I anticipated he was going to play a full season at Bantams. He was coming from Pee Wee, so um, it didn't, uh, didn't really make sense. And then he showed up at tryouts and his, his panic threshold is through the roof. His ability to make decisions, you know, in critical situations and, and help us get the breakout and help us be, you know, sound in the offensive zone from the blue line is, is really great. So we're, we're grateful to have those guys. You know, when I first got to Shakopee, you know, some four or five years ago, um, those boys were squirts. And so I remember seeing them and, and thinking to myself, when they get up here, you know, we're going to have some real horses to, to play with. Um, and, and now they're here and they've got a year of experience under their belt. So um, there'll also be some expectation from the coaching staff for those guys to step in and, and not necessarily be full fledged leaders, but to start flexing their leadership skills and, and to be a little bit more dynamic this year, both on the ice, on the bench and in the locker room. And then kind of just another one of those uh, other younger players too, that I've heard quite a bit about Cole Bumgarner. I've heard a lot on, you know, social media sort of chatter about all these younger players this summer, whether it's in tournaments or just that kind of stuff. But again, another player who I think was the eighth grade last year too, and then had a big off season this summer, heard a lot about him. Uh, for him, you know, is is he also another one that, you know, has pretty high expectations for this upcoming year, probably going to be another, you know, top player is only like a ninth grader. Yeah, well, I, well, two things. One, I think Cole's gonna is a dynamic player, and he's gonna have you know a great career in playing hockey, um, high school, and, and most likely beyond. Uh, Cole made the decision to to enroll at Benilde St. Margaret's this year, so um, we'll we'll have to uh, you know look and watch him as a, as an uh, opponent, and and someone will look to shut down if we find ourselves lined up against those guys. Uh, wish Cole nothing but the best. Uh, enjoyed coaching him and and help and mentor him throughout his youth experiences here. Uh, but he made it. They made a family decision and and, and decided to enroll at another program. And that happens, um, and we wish him nothing but the best. Well, and speaking of that too, uh, I know it sounds like he's left, but are you guys getting any incoming players for this upcoming year, whether it's from youth programs or anyone else that's going to be heading over to Shakopee for this upcoming season? Any incoming players that might be uh, people to look out for this year? Yeah, um, both uh, players from within and from without. Um, it, it, first time since I've been here, uh, first time in a long time where, where players have decided to to yeah, either move into town or open and roll. Um, that'll be a challenge for for our players in our community. Um, that's just unique. You know, those are something that things that typically the bigger schools um, in the hockey world have you know grown accustomed to. Um, so we'll have to work through some of those uh, challenges and the opportunities that come with them. Um, from within, we've got a, a couple of guys uh, coming up from the sophomore uh, in the sophomore class. You know, our Bantam team two years ago was uh, third place in state um, when, when Cooper was a fresh Cooper Simpson was a freshman, and then um, some of the other guys that were in, in that group. Um, so we're really excited about the group that's coming up in general. I think our freshman class. Um, and our sophomore class are really deep. Um, so it's a long list of guys that go through a name um, that we're really excited about. And I think where our program is trending is you're going to onboard as a JV player. And that, um, you know, is, is going to be new as well. Typically it was you came in from Bantams and you were jumping right into a varsity spot. That's it's going to be harder and harder to do, um, which is what all the competitive programs have going on. So we're excited about that. And then in goal, it looks like the goaltender, Houston, uh he he had a pretty good year too. 0.903. It looks like save percentage, two shutouts. Uh, will he be kind of the go-to guy for for goalie again this year in in between the pipes, or are there any other guys that are coming up too that might be uh, competing for that spot? Yeah, well, we we have an embarrassing uh, amount of riches in, in goaltending. Um, throughout our whole program. So I'm, I'm really excited about the goaltender position um, all the way down to our squirts. But yeah, it's it's Alexi's net. Alexi Houston is our incumbent starter. It's his net to lose um, or his net to keep. Um, we expect him to have a fantastic season. Um, you know, he'll be spending the fall playing for the 18U uh, Blades. And so he'll get uh, plenty of competition and, and, and come in ready to go is the expectation. Um, we have a couple of juniors that played JV last year and, and really developed well over the summer here. And so um, we're excited about those guys. And then the two goaltenders for the Bantam AA team will be competing. So we've got five guys really competing for four spots. Uh, we've got some tough decisions to make. Uh, and we're really looking forward to it, though. 
And then kind of one last thing about uh, players, but if captain's been named for this upcoming year, do you guys know who's going to be uh, doing that this season? Yeah, we, we named our captains uh, at our banquet at the end of the year, uh, our end of the season party. Uh, um, we're, we're really excited about these guys. These are our unsung heroes. These guys do a lot of work. Um, they're, they're, they're the glue uh, and big part of we're going to win hockey games is because these guys are leading the way. Um, we have a returner, second year captain and Sam Zovic. He'll be a senior. Um, he's, he, he's versatile. He's played center. He's played D. He's played wing for us. Um, he slotted into play a forward position. Um, most likely we'll start the season with him as a center. Um, and he's just a strong boy, with smart, smart, um, you know, just savvy understanding of how to handle people, how to lead the guys, um, and how to play a smart, efficient hockey game. Uh, Linus Toward uh, is another one. He's a senior as well, forward. Um, he'll play in a top six role, most likely, uh, based on what he's done in the past and through the summer. Um, he's also a fantastic lacrosse player. He's usually top five in scoring in the state each year. Um, and, and we'll be along with Sam, you know, on that lacrosse team. And then another lacrosse crossover is uh, Zane Orchard, uh, who will be one of our, our top 4D. Um, all three of these guys came in as freshmen. Um, so they're, they're just fully savvy in terms of what the expectations are from the coaches, the culture in the locker room. Uh, and they've had a lot of other good leaders that were captains and seniors. So they've got, you know, some good influences and good examples to follow. So we'll need those guys, uh, you know, to steer the ship and to, to kind of, keep everybody in line. Um, Cause like I said, we'll be playing with, with more expectation than we have in the past. So we'll need everybody to be dialed in. And then kind of a question that I just ask anybody who comes on the podcast here, but for you, do you have any favorite memories of this past season, whether it's things like road trips anywhere or any of the, any of the big wins or just, you know, fun moments or practices with the guys at all? Yeah. You know, it's all fun for me. Um, quite frankly, you know, obviously I like winning a big game. We, we hosted a, a holiday tournament, um, this year, or this past year. Um, and we had a, a, a really intense battle with Chan Hassan. I have a lot of respect for the, the, um, their coach Sean Bloomfield and the program and, and, and the talent they have over there. And it was a, it was a hard fought battle. Um, you know, especially as we got a lead, they had the puck for, majority of the game in the second half of it. And so we had to play really good defensively and play really sound. And um, so that was, a, that was a fun game to be a part of. Um, anytime we play Prior Lake, it's fun. That's a rivalry that um, is as old as time, all the way back to when Shockby and Prior Lake were combined as an association. Um, so that was, those, those games are fun as well. Uh, the first time we played them last year, they, um, they, they really took it to us. It was, it was a painful experience. Uh, the second time was was a, a much more competitive game. Um, we feel like we grew a lot in, in, in between those. But looking forward to playing those guys again this year. Uh, Coach Pankratz and I have known each other a while, so those are always heated battles. And uh, But a lot of respect between the two clubs. And then kind of just lastly, to summarize everything we've kind of talked about, but it sounds like, you know, the main thing for Shockby this year, playing with some expectations, but kind of just overall, what should people expect out of the, out of the team for uh, this upcoming year? Yeah, uh, expectation this year uh, is that we're we're competitive in every single game. Um, we've improved the schedule in terms of its strength. So we've added teams like Hermantown, uh, Gentry Academy. Um, you know, we'll, we'll still have Chaska and Chanhassen and the Lakevilles. And so, um, you know, there'll be some tough games that are, are going to look like playoff type games and we expect to be competitive. And, you know, from our perspective, we, we plan to win those games. So. Um, that will be a, a new experience for us going in and, and, and fully expecting and believing we can win. And I, I know we're capable of it. Um, it'll be a matter of, you know, do, do we put the guys in the right positions and then they, do they perform to their the best of their ability? So um, it should be fun, though. It should be a, a really fun season for, for Sabre hockey fans, uh, for our youth to come out to the games and watch our kids play, you know, a skilled game. You know, there'll be moments where we got to get the puck in deep and, and do a four check. But I anticipate more zone entry and more skill plays and, and, and more some of the things that these kids have done when they were youth um, now translating into the high school level. Well, I think that's all the questions I got for you, but uh, otherwise I'm sure we'll get out to some games here coming up in the fall and in the winter, but otherwise, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day and hopping on the rink live podcast, but uh, thanks so much for joining us here today, coach, and have a great rest of your day. Sydney, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And thanks for all you do for the game of hockey. All right. Awesome.